Hey, good morning, church. It is uh, Monday morning. It is uh, November the 16th. It's great to be back with you today. Uh, man, I pray that you've had a good weekend and were encouraged by worshiping with us yesterday. Uh, man, I, I enjoyed being with our family here yesterday. And uh, I don't know, just the whole day was good. Had a great day in worship and um, loved looking at the scripture with you yesterday. So I pray that you were encouraged by those things and pray that you can be encouraged today too as we dive into the scripture um, today. We're back in the book of Acts and so if you've been with us over the last couple of uh, weeks, we've been walking through just the history of the early church and how it began and how they operated and how we can learn from that and apply it to our own life. And so I just pray that you have been encouraged by that. We'll continue that today. Uh, I just want to remind you um, that this Wednesday we have a special night. Uh, this Wednesday we've got our talent show. Uh, we're also doing a fish fry. I think there's some chicken for people that don't like fish as well. Um, but we have that coming up this Wednesday, uh, 6.30 to uh, 7.45 or so. We're going to eat at 6.30 downstairs. So if you haven't signed up for that, you need to call the church. If you haven't registered for that, you need to uh, shoot us an email, give us a call, and we'll get you signed up for that. And um, it's, a, it's a way to bless our children's ministry. All the proceeds from that night go to our kids ministry um and then so after dinner we're going to come upstairs and do the um we'll come upstairs at least i think we're coming upstairs and doing the talent show uh we're going to be uh there's going to be some people doing some songs that they have uh practiced and learned uh some people are going to be playing an instrument some people might be doing some fun things uh who knows it might just be a surprise kind of night there's all kind of stuff going on and then out in the lobby there'll be some things put on display we let people um Put in and submit some artwork and some different things that they have made uh, so that'll be kind of cool and um, so we would love to have you join us it's gonna be a, a good time so uh, we will uh, look forward to seeing you that night um, but today we're back in the scripture and so if you were with us last uh, Thursday so last Thursday we looked at the story in the book of Acts chapter 4 where Peter and John were uh, arrested, they were put on, kind of put on trial. Um, Peter proclaimed how good God is and uh, about the salvation that comes through Jesus and got a lot of flack from the religious leaders in the first century about that. They did not appreciate his teaching on Jesus and support of Jesus because they felt like Jesus threatened their I don't know, regime, I would say, the uh, religious leaders of the first century. And so they had a lot of angst toward the believers and the followers of Jesus. And so here Peter and John were um, arrested, put on trial. Uh, they proclaimed the message of Jesus even while on trial. And then um, eventually Peter and John were let go. So I want to look at the story of what takes place right after they are let go. And... Um, and then we'll we'll read a couple of verses here. So if you want to join me, I'm in the book of Acts chapter 4. And this is Peter and John just after they were released from prison. So it says in verse 23, On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in it. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Where David writes in the book of Psalms, Why did the nations raise? Why do the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. So let me just stop right there. This is an interesting thing. One of the things that's really interesting to me is that when it says that Peter and John are released, they go back to the, the believers and they meet with them, tell them what went on. And then it says, when they heard this, they, meaning the believers. So it wasn't just Peter and John that prayed. This was the believers. This was, um, it would be this the church. It was the believers in the first century in the city of Jerusalem there. So it's the idea that the church family heard the reports from Peter and John, heard what was going on, heard they were arrested unjustly, heard they were put on trial and accused of all these wrong things that they never did. Um, and Peter and John tell them this, then the people, the, the church family, prayed. So it wasn't like just Peter and John, they're the religious elite, yeah, they're going to pray. No, this was the prayer of the church, right? Not just 
not just Peter and John, these like apostles, and you think, oh yeah, they should pray, and they should be bold, and all that stuff. This was the church, like all of us, like common believers in Jesus, praying to God. One of the things they do first, they call God sovereign. They say, God, you're sovereign. In that, in that word sovereign, they are saying, God, you're in control. That even the suffering that we encounter, God, you're in control. You're letting that happen. You're you are giving permission for us to suffer. You're giving permission for us to be persecuted. And they're saying, God, we're going to trust you. Uh, it's a good, good message for us in our context today. Uh, do we trust God even when it's not ideal, even when it's not what we want? They go on, they give kind of, they, they mention the idea of what David said in the Old Testament that, that all along people have been plotted against good. That evil men in this world, evil people in this world will plot against the good things of man. And uh, that's just the nature of the beast. Verse 27, this is where it gets interesting to me. And down through verse 30. <clears throat> it says, indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate, this is still their prayer. So understand the context. He's still, they're still praying. They said, God, indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate, you've heard of those two names, right? The people that put Jesus on trial met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you have anointed, right? So they're saying, listen, this has been going on a long time. They say, Lord, indeed, we know that Herod, Pontius Pilate, some of the Gentiles, some of the religious leaders in the first century that were Jewish, they all conspired and got together to make sure that this whole thing went down the way they wanted to so that they could get Jesus out of the way. We know that. We know they plotted against you, God and your um, and uh, your son, verse twenty eight. They talking about the re religious leaders, Herod, Pontius Pilate, those leaders in the first century. They did what your power and your will had decided beforehand should happen. That's such a cool thing. This is the thing. We sometimes look at hardship that it's like, oh man, I wonder if that that's not what God wanted to happen. That's not the plan. And I'm not saying that God wants bad things to happen. I'm not saying that. But this was part of the plan, right? The idea that Jesus would go and suffer was part of God's plan from the beginning of creation. Uh, the Bible tells us that Jesus was a lamb of God slain before the creation of the world. So this was God's plan all along. It didn't catch God off guard at all. Um, they're giving account to that reality that God is the one in control. Here's where it's cool. Verse 29, they pray. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. I just love that passage. A couple of things that I want you to circle or underline or highlight in your Bible. They say, now Lord, consider their threats. I want you to circle or underline, consider their threats. He's saying that the, the church there is saying, God, in light of what we are going through, in light of the persecution, in light of the hardship, in light of the false, ar false arrest, in light of uh, us being kind of ostracized in our community, in light of that, God, we're experiencing that. So in light of that context, here's what we want you to do, God. There's evidence all through this passage that hardship came, right? Jesus said, if, if they persecuted the prophets, if they persecuted me, Jesus says, they're going to persecute you. They're gonna, you're going to go through hardship. So the, the disciples, the church family, was saying, God, consider all this going on. Consider all the hostility, all the tension, all the persecution. And then they say, and enable your servants. Meaning, give us power. Give us courage. Give us the ability. Give us the opportunity. That's such a cool phrase. Give us the opportunity to speak your word with great boldness. They say, in light of the persecution... In spite of the persecution, God, give us the opportunity to speak with boldness. Give us the courage to speak with boldness, the word of life. That was their prayer. I just think that's such an amazing prayer. Um, and I talked about this a little bit yesterday on Sunday morning. That that prayer is so different than most of our prayers. Let's just be honest. Uh, maybe, maybe you're different than me, but I'll be honest with you. Uh, I was convicted as I read that this last week. Um, in my own life, that my prayers typically revolve around, Lord, I, I hope this food is good. Uh, Lord, I, I hope that people come to know Jesus. Uh, Lord, we're going to go on this mission trip, so please keep us safe. Don't let us get hurt, God. Uh, let us have safe travel. Let us not get sick. Let us not have any injuries. Let, those are the things we typically pray for. 
Um, and I'm not saying, again, I said this yesterday, I'm not saying it's wrong to pray for safety or, or, or good physical health. I'm not saying that's wrong. But if we want to see a move of God, maybe we need to get away from our comfort. Maybe the, the desire should not be on our comfort or our security, but on the powerful name of Jesus. Maybe our prayers and our focus should be on what is best for the kingdom to move forward. Can we pray those prayers? Because here's the thing, you don't see the disciples, you don't see the early church praying, God, in light of all this going on, would you keep us safe today? God, I know that Peter and John were arrested last week for preaching about Jesus, so God, would you, would you make sure that we don't get arrested either? God, would you make sure that we don't get sick because of what's going on here? God, would you make sure that my kids don't get picked on at school because we belong to Jesus? God, would you do that? You don't see that. You don't see that posture in the first century. Everything they did was praying for boldness. And I just think that's, to me, it's convicting. To me, it makes me realize there are still some really shallow areas of my faith in, in God. And I need to be stretched, and I need to make sure that I grow from there. Um, it says, really interesting, it says, uh, After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the Word of God boldly. And I just wonder, maybe, how can you pray different? How can I pray different um, in my life? Um, have I prayed, Lord, give me boldness? Have I prayed, God, give me courage? God, give me strength, give me wisdom to speak your name well and to represent you well. Have we prayed those prayers? Um, have we prayed, God, would you, through your Holy Spirit, shake me to my core, to the degree that I want to give you everything I have, to the degree that I want to make much of your name, God? Can we pray those prayers? Um, hopefully you've been encouraged by that today. Let's pray. God, we, just, uh, God we, we are excited about reading what your word has to say. And God, every time I read through the book of Acts, first of all, I'm convicted because I realize that there are areas of my f faith that need so much growth. Um, there are so many times that I, I want comfort and I choose comfort over obedience. Um, I, I choose comfort over sacrifice. And I pray that you would forgive me for those times. I pray that you would give us boldness, God, that you would give us courage to live like we are called to live. I pray, God, that you would enable us to step forward into moments and opportunities that you have provided to us, that we might make much of your name, God. Um, Lord, I pray that you would help us move out of that comfort zone, help us move out of what we feel is good and easy, and God, we lean on you for dependence, we lean on you for support, and God, that we put all of our confidence in you. So help us to do that, God. I pray that you would give us a spirit um, of excitement and passion. I pray that you would shake us to the core to the degree that we would just be all in for you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining us today. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. We'll finish Acts 4 tomorrow. Uh, really great passage at the end of this uh, chapter that really encourages us to be a family of believers that looks out for one another. So we'll see you tomorrow morning, uh, 9 a.m. God bless.